Oh. Silencer, it still helps because if they jump the tinker, you know, silencer can old. But let's get away from that because I'm clearly not going to be right. But let's just forget that. Don't I, sell yourself short. Slack. Uh, final tribe. Ten seconds. Ah, they need a ga- They need somebody to hold people in place. Lena. Lena. They need uh, Lena. I would like a more dependable stun. You know, Lena's nice. Marana's nice. Great stuns if you land them. But we've seen this time and time again. The Wyvern and the Lena combo. It's super good. You just Wyvern someone and you get a double stun with that. And also, Lena has been time and time again picked against Morphling. You just burst that hero really quickly. Yeah. And the Phoenix. Yeah. So you, have, you have three great heroes against the Egg now. Mm-hmm. Three are the best ones, actually. Why do people keep picking Phoenix, Bulldog? I mean, I know that it can be good sometimes, but everyone keeps picking it, and we see the same things. Marana and Lena picked up against it. Egg's constantly getting blown up. Can't people just leave the Phoenix alone? It's just a great hero. It's great, uh, got tons of versatility. It's great in the lane, and then it's also a great team fighter. You got the heal as well, which is great for pushing and all that. And yeah, you don't always have these three cores you're playing against, so sometimes Egg is just game winning. I guess. And yeah, just forcing attention on the Egg is also good, even if it dies. That's true. It does uh, make that scenario where they have to deal like it, deal with it. Kind of like a tombstone, but ten times better. Because yeah. it stuns. And there's your introductory course to what Egg does. Thank you. Congratulations. All right, here. We haven't seen uh, the uh, Dandy Hero yet now. And we see the Lena, which is probably mid. Yep. Probably. It's probably Jesse's. Let's we, go. We saw yesterday da- and Navi playing T against Alina, destroying that hero. Magnus. Where is the Magnus? I want to see it again. Bendy's done great on it before. Does it fit in his lineup? I mean, AOE is good with Phoenix. Nice follow-up. Helps with the axe, too. Great stun there. Ooh, wow. Dragon King ban and a racing pick. Wow. Dragon. Looking scary. Yeah, you like that final tribe lineup? Yeah, they're just so tanky now. And even Wraith King is going to get that double blink and double attack on the Phoenix Egg. This oh. Egg is going to have very little impact. Axe is going to have to have some amazing calls. Is it is is there a chance that we're going to see a Dendi Invoker? Is this a good Invoker game? As an expert Invoker player... Because you can kite Ursa a little bit with the cold snap. You can burn Wraith King's mana at the start. It's nice. You can Sunstrike whoever is Winter's Curse, which is nice. You can Sunstrike if Lina goes for a self use or something. Yeah, if you're a uh, God Invoker, I would... I, would I mean, it's a Dendi Invoker. Are you saying he's not a God Invoker? No, I'm saying he is. <laughs> All right. All right. You're right. Look at you, Sheaves. The God Invoker himself. The God Invoker Dendi. Holy moly, holy goly. Uh-oh, well, here he comes. What's up, buddy? Oh, the who? All right. You're Swedish. You should. Yeah. You Why like... don't you join in? This is not cringe, by the way. <laughs> Bulldog. What? It is not. It no, is it's not. not. It's... You know, it's a nice pregame ritual, and it's actually helping them a lot. I think it's great. And this time they're uh, they're right. Great. They normally say like they that they do this because it's a chance that there's uh, that this is the last game, and this is the last series. If they lose here, it's it's over. You know, it's the tournament lives on the line. Very manly. Uh, Bulldog, up to you first. Who do you think is gonna take game one? <laughs> Uh, that's, uh, what's the picks again? Uh, Are you going to go for uh, the, the Dendi Invoker here. or Final Tribe? Final yeah, Phoenix tribe. Egg will get destroyed. Phoenix Egg's destroyed, says oh. number one. <laughs> you know, I want Vega to win some games. Yeah, me too. Not sure it's going to be this one, though. But I, I'm going to have my, my heart set on you for game two, Vega. But I'll go with Final Tribe on this one as well. And she you called the Invoker. So I predicted actually this series would be 2 0 going away of uh, Final Tribe. Um, <laughs> but the Invoker, though. But the Invoker, invoker though. The Invoker. Do I, I, I want to believe in, in Denny Invoker. Put me over here. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she I know. Well. It's a risky move. Let's find out if it's going to pan out. It is over to Odie Pixel and Fog. Thank you very much, Shiva. Yes, game one of the beautiful Vegas squad against the beautiful final trap. 
Oh, I do pick, so I'm here with Fog. Hello. We just see the two lineups. Uh, they seem to have a lot of belief in, of course, the final tribe. But there is a Dendi Invoker. There is. I'm, I'm excited to see what this man could do with it in 2018. Has he get got? Did he get to play in any of the games recently, like against Secret? I don't think he did play. Much. No, he didn't get to play Invoker. He has, of course. I mean, Dendi's played a ton of. Oh Invoker, yeah. But past, yeah. All right, but playing Invoker can be a bit tough because it's like you know you're setting your team up for just harder to play right harder to execute because how's, how's he going to build this game do you think Dendi? are we, we going to see sort of the quas wax and walk around the map build or oh, what is, is this are they going to roche with ursa wraith king oh my god they're going to roche i don't know if they will oh my god they're going to roche so why are they what are they waiting for why would, they not, why would they not do it straight away what's the hesitation oh they're waiting for them to come oh they're even just debating them Oh, they're debating a level one so you can get first blood. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Pex. Oh, Pex. Rest. Rest. Is it F in chat for Pexu. Oh! Is this a kill into Roche? Or no, no, no. They killed the racing <laughs> son. You killed the racing son, so you can't. Yeah, that's true. All right. Got him first blood. All right, my game's nice. Pretty nice. I, I, for a second, I was yeah. like, are they going to do it? It's not worth doing really anymore, like the level one Roche. Unless you, like, run all your heroes out. Two heroes can get, what, level two, right? I think it is. Uh, is yeah, like two and a bit. Yeah, two and a bit. Just let two of them get the XP. All right, so first blood off the bat. Who got the last hit? Chessie. Oh, begins. that sucks. That's that's really that sucks for Dendi. Now you've got Alina. Because what's he spent with his first extra money? blood? Oh, yeah. He's just got mangoes. He got some extra mangoes, so he can oh, spam more. He's got the salve already on him as well. I thought he might just go for extra null right off the bat, so you can just have that huge base damage advantage. I think we're probably gonna see an exhort out of Dendi. I. Usually only see him go exit when he plays this hero. He doesn't have the greatest Sunstrike setup around the map, though. They only have the Axe Call. But he wants to have that high base damage so he can deal with Lina's. But I've been seeing this matchup go very Lina favored lately, right? We've been seeing, like, uh, Ori. Ori solo killed no one at Hamburg. And it's and Lina's just... Yeah, Lina's just good. And then he gets the range creep, though. All right. Oh. Nice, very nice. Important. All right, so... Looking at everything, so we have the Ursa support, of course, that we've been seeing a bit more lately. This egg, I do believe, is going to die in every team fight, right? There's a Marana, there's a Lina, there's an Ursa. More than likely, the MNT is going to have a tough time keeping that one alive. So Kezu is going to have to have some really good, really good calls. And oh, oh MNT, MNT. He's slowing the it's, attack speed. I mean, but he's obviously level one with those fire spirits. One more swat, he's dead, right? The Orb of Venom by Heinzkin. Sure. Ooh, he, yeah, unless he can out-juke him. <laughs> Not gonna happen, he can't escape. Heinzkin gets the second kill for TFT. All right. There's a double melee lane down here, though, versus Kezu. So he should be able to get a decent chunk of, of uh, last hits and put some pressure on, too. Just has to have the protection of that Phoenix so he doesn't get, like, you know, stunned into massive amounts of Fury swipes building up. So, I mean, is this a lane where you imagine we'll see Kezu sort of stay here, or does he is he going to need to start skipping the wave, or because he's against two melee, you just stick in the lane? He just sticks in it. I don't yeah. think he needs to do the, the cut wave shenanigans that we're seeing so much. Madara versus a double range lane can actually get pressured quite a lot. Jonas, not connect the arrow, but might have enough damage. Uh, oh, Dendi gets killed mid action in the meanwhile. Uh oh. oh he commits the third lead. He really wants it. Oh, he's not going to get it either. All right. But mid lane, oh. Dendi dies. He was doing well on the last hits too. But now it's 8 6 to Lena, 4 3 to the Invoker. Uh oh. And that matchup just gets harder and harder. Oh. Hanskin. Should die here. Oh. oh. That's a fair bit out with, oh. with the swipes. He's got the tango. Where are the skeletons attacking? Skeletons! Help out your boy! Do they get the last hits though? Alright, they help him secure the last hits. That's what's on their mind. Ah, just the one though. Just the one. Second, but it's true. Yeah, with his mid lane. Tough times for Don though. Yeah. 11 7. Lena favored matchup. All those extra mangoes too from the first blight definitely makes it even harder for Dendi. You've been burned. Oh, he's, yeah, he's gonna have such a hard time here. Yeah, it's was super hard to come back from uh, being behind in the 1v1. Yeah. Up against Lena. Oh, ooh, ooh, Kezu, be careful. And the fire spirits, and that does keep sort of putting a stop to hands, can you know, really sort of punishing and getting kills. He's going to start cutting a little bit here. Oh, Dire Courier died. Oh, that, that had a hefty had bit a of regen. Of, oh my god, it had six tangles in a salve. Now, Was that now Dendi's now? in trouble too. He's still got a salve on him though. He does still have some regen. He's trying to fight. I think that was the top regen. Okay, I think that yeah, was more I think that was yeah, yeah, that was going out to more. But now Dendi okay. doesn't have a courier, and he's getting pushed behind the pushed behind the tower. Uh oh. Vega already in a lot of trouble at this first start on laning phase. I mean, Axe is doing very well, but they lost their courier. Their invoker's in a in a very very 
poor spot now. Uh-oh. So top lane Madara is able to get some farm, but they lost their courier, so he has no regen. So I'd imagine you're just going to see Era as well as Jonas just constantly start like you got to get in poke. poke him. Yeah, yeah, just keep hitting him. Play aggressive and make sure that he's, he, he can't get that CS. Yep. Yeah. There's mid lane. And when that six comes online, that's where we're, we've really got to sort of watch out. And then he has to be very careful. So, I mean, a free farm, a free farm lead in this game is problematic for so many different reasons. Like their front line, they do have at least have an axe, Madara. Forced to wave out, will survive because of it. But yeah, a farm lead in this game, we've seen, we've seen what a farm leader can do versus Morphlings. Morph is, he's going to be farming low HP. You can just get Laguna comboed very easily if this Lina does have an excellent start, which she is already off to. Oh boy. Oh boy indeed. A rough opening here for Vega Squadron. 2k behind. And just the four minutes in. They're going to have trouble securing their bounty runes too. I was going to say the five minute bounty runes could be really painful. They can't, I mean top, if they go for them, they're going to die. Yeah. They're way too low, they don't have extra regen. So top should be TFT's bounty runes. Bottom, I think, that can be in contestion. That one Vega can definitely try to secure. Oh, Hanskin's already Hans getting in position. Yeah, he's though. already getting over to take theirs. I mean, it's going to be three for one. By the looks of it. Yeah. On the bounty front. Well, Pex is contesting it though. Didn't manage to grab it. You m okay, nice TP. Sounds good. Had a bit of a swipe again with Kezzy. Kezzy does have the ring of valve. Yep. Kez is farming really well, but the thing is that Ursa is kind of guarding his Wraith King to have excellent farm. 31 8 last hits on Wraith King compared to the Morphling's 22 and 3. And that 22 and 3 it was also used to buy regen, right? It was used to buy those six tangos as well as that salve that were killed well, when the courier was killed early on. So you have their courier, of course, alive again. Well, still tough times for Dendi. Very tough times indeed. Very tough times. Paxu's trying to set up here, maybe. All right. I mean, won't really find them any action, but does stop Chessie from going in and bursting down Dendi. But uh, the, the difference at the moment in the mid, it's not great for Dendi. And now Madara is left alone. Arrow off the mark. Still heavily limiting the farm that the, this Morphin can actually get from this lane. And mm -hmm. has to play so careful. Oof. Level 5 to level 7 now, Lina, with that huge advantage. Phase boots already picked up too, so definitely could see the kill threat constantly onto Dendi. I do think they might actually just have to have those TPs ready to protect him. Thing is that they don't have those the greatest protection heroes, right? They have Silencer and Phoenix. These heroes, they're not really the, the best at rotating. Phoenix can respond with the TP. Silencer is not really able too much. They don't give a stun either, so it's not like they stop anyone from actually doing anything. That's Frost. He's feeling strong. Level six. Lots of little little homies. They're all gonna get spun down they're though. But Kazu's taking a lot of damage. Yeah, and there's now a wrap Hanskin. around. And skin, can you close the gap? Just see him, gets a bit of a slow with that early level of clap, and while well, that was set up for the Raid Fire Blast, gets the kill. Don't think Kezu expected to take that much damage from all those little skeletons. No, they, they did a, 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 a way more than they expected. Maybe hoping for the RNG of the spins to yeah. clean them out quicker, but that, it didn't happen. They, they were allowed to really hit into the axe. No, yeah, that's an axe with a, a stout shield and a ring of health. It, it didn't matter. Yep. Now they might have to start changing things up a little bit because bottom lane is too much threat. The Phoenix as well as that Axe can't actually pose much of a threat. Wraith King's already past level 6. More threat onto Madara. He doesn't have a support up here helping him. He can't farm at all. Uh, starting to put some damage onto this tier 1 tower uh, up top now. TFT, they have started the game beautifully. Everything's going right for them. They had a game plan. They set up for some that sneaky play around the Roche, get the first blood, set up their lean to first success. Looking like a solid plan for them in these first eight minutes. Invisible. Madara commits forward. TP response. So now Chessie's looking to get involved. He's like, all right, mid, mid's going great. I have an invis rune. I can start making gank plays. And we've, oh, oh, Morphling. Uh oh, the Dragon Slave Laguna. There it is. Oh, easy kill for Chessie. 
says goodbye to them all. And just kind of, he can just walk back to his mid lane. He gets the exact target that he wanted. Oh, there he down as well. Oh, no. He's got the call, but those swipes, they'll stack up. Clap slow as well. Have a stun again in five seconds if he needs it. It's diving in, Kezu's trying to hide. The speed, oh, the hunger move speed. It's gonna keep him alive, and Vega Squadron do get their first kill as Peksu finds error. All right, they bring three top. They've actually just abandoned the bottom lane and just said, Kezu, you've got this on your own. We're gonna have to try to secure Madara's farm. Bring up this Phoenix. And now they're able to at least push them off, so Madara will be able to get some much needed farm here. That was Dandy level seven, okay. He has the phase boots finished up too, so he's caught up with the rotation that Chessie did. He's gotten a little bit extra last hit, still pretty far behind. Radiance top tower is under attack. I'm going to back in 10 seconds for Chessie. So can gear up and get ready to look for another, another chance to maybe make a rotation, get an easy kill. Their car strange talent also making it very hard for, for anyone that tries to land against now. Top, but on down to the bottom. And this can to back away from Kezu as MNT does turn up. Dark damage. Ooh, last hits with that clap. Oh. Uh oh, the crit. Whoa! Oh. Nearly. But not quite. That crit is so satisfying. That's a big one. And TP will come out from Pegsu down to help the bottom. But bounty room wise, TFT, they grab the two bottom. I'll get the one top. Again, sort of a three for one on the bounty room. No, in fact, they get all four. They get four bounty runes, then he tries to go onto on the Ursa, but does not have the damage at the moment really to, to kill off Hansken. Madara, that was that was a nice little morph play there. Morphs into the Marana, gets the triple leap off after the waveform, actually ends up surviving up top through that to that gank. I think it was a Laguna committed as well. I think he may have gotten arrowed while going for that bounty rune. But he does not really get any any farm off the map. He has to play completely defensively and it's already it's already a five K gold lead. I mean they, they got all bounty runes this time around. And they're hunting immediately. They want to be able to kill Dendi and take this tower. I think they do have a catapult wave coming in soon too. Ideal timing for a rotation is Hanskin. We'll spot out the two supports. See, there's MNT. Looking back, Dendi. Just gets the tornado, but Chessy just with the casual dragon slave from the river. Catches MNT. And Dendi realizes he needs to absolutely be the big playmaker. He had the few points in Exort for the laning phase as well as that Quas. Then he puts three points in Wax. I think he knows he needs to be making moves around because his, his Morphling's not getting farm on the map. The Axe is not going to have a timely Blink Dagger either. We've seen more of the hybrid build anyway than Invoker. And a full armlet already on Frost. Jesus. Bulldog's infectious. I keep saying Jesus. Almost a full Yules, two on the Lina. Everything. So far yeah, ahead. I mean, 7k it, already. This, yeah, this Lina chassis could just... I mean, he already sort of has begun to just take over the entire game. They have to make moves away from their Morphling now. This is this is a good move, at least. They can try to get some pickoffs. Dendi has to be extremely mobile. And, oh. Smoke gets broken. They are taking that mid lane for the time being. Chessie will port back. Pretty much has the Yules finished up, so he wants to get those few last hits to be able to get that. Because once he does have Yules, he can set up for non-stop kills, and he will finish off this tower. Setting up with the Moonlight Shadow, too. Maybe MMT will try for a deny. But uh, will not get it. Chessie gets the tower. That's the Yules finished. So. Oh, 12 minutes in as well. Chessie hitting some crazy timings this game on his Lina's items. As they go trying for the trade, they, they are pushing down onto this bottom tier 1 tower. They should get away with it as it looks like TFT are uh, happy and set with just taking both mid and the top tier 1. Pushing Frost closer and closer towards the, having the Blink Dagger over the armlet. They're just getting so much off the map. I mean, there is a nice little split push coming out from Vega, but the deep wards have come into play now too. We see TFT, they put one deep one in the jungle. They put even one defensive one to watch where Vega's movements are going to be coming through their jungle too. And they're just going to continue their threat. The curse comes out, the arrow follow. And they go. Very nicely. Uh, oh, oh. Oh. oh, he's out. He's out. He is alive. He is alive. And now, Jonas? Oh, Dandy tries to go in. The wrap there from Hanska. They've got the sentry down. 
And that level one goes for it ain't gonna be the speediest Dendy trying to escape. Turns with the deafening blast. He does manage to hold back the bear on the wraparound though. Peksu getting lagooned. But Dendy does manage to escape. Plays himself away from Hansken. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. They have so many ways that they can set up with that curse. Like the curse into the Lina is the one we saw displayed by OG a lot of TI, of course, but yeah, curse into Arrow too, very nice. Dendi does survive, but they lose their silencer. And they're forced to commit egg defensively. So a big thing we're gonna be looking at for uh, for Vega is the axe blink dagger timing, because he's probably the He's probably the easiest one to make the plays. Dendi can, because he's gone for the Quas Wex build and the urn, so we'll probably see him run around and try to make space. But they really need this blink. Just gonna make things a hell of a lot easier. And they can actually kill our Wraith King. Even though he does have Reincarnate, he's Quas Wex now, so that mana burn could come into play. Just has to watch out for the wand charges and needs a couple more levels in Wex for that mana burn to be very significant. But deep aggressive words for Vega, spotting out the movements from TFT. Yeah, let's sort of talk about TFT as a whole. You know, it, it, you know we lo they do love to, to get this Wraith King. It yeah. seems like, you know, Frost, super confident on it. They play really well around it. I just wonder, what, how, it, how is it that we sort of see them have such success with a hero that lots of other teams, they don't really like to touch? Like, what's, what's different about TFT that, that makes the Wraith King so good for them? Madara gets stunned up, we'll be okay. Um, they just pick a, they like to pick drafts with a lot of disables, I've noticed. Yeah. And having the, this, this like tanky guy, I don't know, he might just seem to really like it a lot too, but he always seems to be quite farmed on it. Yeah, like it absolutely just, it works, works well. out. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're really good with it. He's like, it's like having this stun on your on your carry hero is, it can just be, oh. <laughs> I mean, cause it, it, that, it can that's be the very thing, is, I just things. wonder why we don't really see sort of other teams start to, you know, dabble with the Wraith King, sure, it, it, it's not what it once was, it is one of those heroes that got nerfed time and time again, but uh, it's great to see TFT just uh, just consistently look very strong with it, you know, any game that TFT get the Wraith King, you, you know that they're going to be in their element. He's got a nerf, yeah, like you said, a lot, like his vamp, his aura. Oh, it's going to jump in, but if anything, that's going to be the Frost, he gets himself outside at the range of the EMP. The Supernova comes down in the midst of the pit, TFT back off for now. But they're fine. He MP is used. Kezu actually just gets beaten down on the side by Chessy. Madara tries to waveform across to help, but Frost is there on top of the Phoenix. They've lost two on Vega. The stun comes out to Madara. He's surrounded. He'll be able to turn himself back in the Morphling, trying to escape it with the waveform already used. There's more than enough damage from TFT to beat down that Morph and TFT. They take the three kills. They get themselves back into the pit. They lose absolutely nothing. And uh, everything. I mean, this game. It's already 12k at 16. We, we've seen some rough games here at this land. I mean, heck, we just came out of a rune series. But this game, <laughs> this is looking like another level of roughness. This is just, yeah, 12k lead 60 minutes in. I don't know how Vegas switched this one around. This, I don't this know looks either. like to be uh, one of the games we can put on the impossible list. Yep, just might be there. Madaris, but bottom, bottom five net worth. Yeah. Frost, we're gonna watch. Let's just watch this again, ready? Oh jeez. They should add that as a sound clip for the Wraith King. The OD Pixel scream. Nendi unable to find any earn charges. 0-1-0. Zero, zero. Kezu also 0-2-0. Zero, zero. I mean they only have one kill on the board, so we won't look at we won't look at the scores. We won't read them off. What was it? Shadow Blade, yeah. I'm chess. Shadow Blade I mean, duel chess 17 minutes. Huge. I mean Chessy I mean, we've seen Chessy do some uh, do some really good jobs in the lanes. You know, sure yesterday, some people may have said, you know, Tinker late game, you know, decisions weren't, you know, optimum. But in terms sure. of his laning performance, you know, Chessy can be incredibly strong. No, he's been very active, especially in this game, right? He had a great mid matchup. He rotated top, killed the Morphling when he had, saw the opportunity yeah. with an Invis. Yeah, he's making all all great moves. And PFT, they're just using this this comfortable draft that they like to play with, work very well. Like Ursa, you know, you know we have, we we of course theory, right? theory crafted the support Ursa. People were playing it for a while. It got nerfed. People kind of stopped, but. They still stick with their core Wraith King, because Wraith King, he's got it nerfed a lot as a, like a support, but if you're actually able to get yeah. those levels and get the ball rolling, this hero does does provide quite a lot. And I think it does oh, it, and, it oh, and again. <laughs> Bursting down the morph, I, I think we really are starting to see this. I think this is what something that sort of started to become a common thing in, in ESL, because I feel like in the past, people might not necessarily think, oh, they got a morph, we're going to pick a Lena. Uh -huh. But I, I feel like that's really starting to be a thing with the teams now. They see a morph. 
Lena seems to be such a good answer because you get this build what the yours in the Shadow Blade and as you say you're just hunting him down Hunt. and you're catching him low. And they've had uh, full map control and mm. so they get rune control. That one wasn't even a Shadow Blade play, it was just an Invis rune again. Chessie just walks up, stuns yeah. him and kills him. No time to react, they can't even get the global up because of how fast it is. DD rune now again because of that map control. Easy tower claimed. And it's is Bexu going to get boots this game? I don't think he's going to be able to. Know, That's man. probably the saddest thing. We got 200 gold to get it. I don't think it's going to change anything, but... No. Oh, man. Oh, Vega. But because I, I really feel like TFT is, is, is such an interesting team to follow. Because I feel like when they do play the best, they, like, they play really good. Yeah, like, there's a reason why, you know, oh. last season we saw this team... Turn up to turn up to quite a few lands. You know they would they would sort of consistently place well in the European qualifiers, and oh. as we're seeing in games like this, they can just they can play it flawlessly. They don't make any mistakes. They just get kill after kill after kill. And this is definitely one of those games where I don't know if we'll see an early GG. As I feel like Vega in the past, they have been a team that do like to hold on, no matter what. But uh, it's certainly getting close to that territory. Yeah, this this game yeah. definitely it's looks. Oh no. He'll be safe. Set it up with the Yules. Gets the stun. Oh! Gets tornado. Next to right click. Oh! Okay. In Pew, deafening blast. Protecting him from that extra. But yeah, it's just TFP absolutely right. dominating this game. Yep. Vega, they're completely split up. We're not seeing we're not seeing the party horns. We're not seeing the moves around the map together. They don't really have heroes that can make the plays. They're really relying on just the invoker and the axe to make plays with like the blink dagger and the Quaswex invoker, because Phoenix Silencer, they, they don't really like go around the map and kill stuff together. So it's oh, again insult to injury. Godlike. That's my Laguna blade sound. The prize is mine. Die, Mongrel. Twenty minutes. Did they get all runes again? I think they did, didn't they? They did. They got yeah, all, they're the get bounties, all again. bounties again. We're approaching the one k per minute. Oh, oh, that's not good. That's not good for Vega. Nope. That is not good. Oh, when's Desso? Oh, if it, when Frost gets Desso, he may <laughs> one-shot anybody. Shot anybody. Dead. I think maybe Axe and Morphling can survive. Yeah, Axe and Morphling can survive a crit, but anyone else is is yeah. dead from a Desolator Wraith. Very, crit. very dead. Yeah. And they've got all the items now to deal with. Like, I mean, there was already probably no way that an egg was going to go off in this game, but they have now have even more items to deal with it. They've got the blink on the supporter or so, so he can always be sure to commit forward for it. Yeah. Hard times for Vega. That's TFT. Continue their map dominance. 18,000 gold lead. Almost a BKB on Lina. They just feel so safe. Now Vega, they're all sitting behind their Morphling. They've got wards down too, so they do see... Maybe Chessie. they catch Chessie. Maybe this could be the, this yeah. could be the comeback. They might punish Chessie. Oh. Uh-oh. Chessie. Starting to go. Oh. Misses the timing. Damn it. Oh. There's a global. They have a global. They can look to just hit the egg, though. A couple more pokes will do. You can see them sort of double... Double thinking out there. They do get the call onto Chessy. Sun truck down as well. They'll kill Chessy. Chessy actually buys back immediately because he knows that this is a fight that they can take. He TP's over towards the tier one. The Fury swipes stack up his Hanskin. Kills off Kenzu. Madara jumps forward. Looking for Hanskin. Cold embraces there, but Madara is into the Lena form. He drops out of stun. It's not enough to kill Hanskin. Hanskin will survive. Chessy trying to get in position to fight back, but the sentries are down, so Madara knows that he's around. Frost also. Continuing to hunt, Madara gets himself away with the waveform and TP. So, I mean, they killed Chessie. They do yeah. lose two heroes for it, but Chessie buys back. So, overall, gold net worth, that is going to be a better trade for Vega. Slight, very slight, but they do get something out of it. Chessie's age is timed out right before that fight uh, started, actually. And they were a bit afraid, to, I guess, to hit the egg. There's not really that many stuns on the side of Vega. They only really have the axe call and, like, some little invoker, like, cold snaps and stuff. But yeah. they, were a bit, they were afraid to just commit forward onto it fully. How's that Nigga punish? Nearly there on the Desolator. <sighs> and Jonas, <sighs> fold me on your treads, alright. Damage monsters on this side. And did Dendi get any earned charges? Or did he? He might have. No, he didn't. He's 0-1-0. I don't think he was in the AoE either. He got pushed out because that Lagoon had to start. Still quite a ways away from that Aghanim says he went for four staff first for, to try to protect his teammates from that Yule's Lina combo. But Chessie on the prowl. Oh! Ooh, he's, he's morphed up a bit though. He's got no time to here. Madara's gonna live. So the strike will be there on Chessie. Obviously not a crazy level though, so Chessie will be fine. 
and not quite able to burst down Madar. He was ready this time. He had enough strength more than now. They'll be able to get Hanskin. Will they? Will they? No. Oh, yes. there we go. There we go. They did get him. <laughs> they did get the kill. Onto the support Ursa. Good that Madara is not sitting too low on that uh, on the lanes while farming. That's the way Vega has to play this game. Since they're so far behind, they pretty much just have to commit like four heroes to kill one over and over again. Just sit behind your morphling like, like time and time again. As a Dendi, he's hunting. Oh, Dendi. He's got the combo. Doesn't have a detection though. Chessie, meanwhile, bottom finds MNT. They, they got us. us. Oh, error. Oh, he's out though. Or is he? The sun strike. Oh, error's out. Gets himself away there with the Arctic burn and TP out. Frost, I imagine he has the death zone now, right? Mm-hmm. He does. Looking for that BKB next. <sighs> Double hit. Double hit, Deso. Let's just watch the Wraith King. Let's watch him farm. And BKB. Look how fast he farms, too. And what do you do about this? Like, you can't gank this. You can't just go and jump on a Wraith King. Especially... The power I, of the hero. The thing is that you have to start to make some moves. You have to be able to get some successful moves because you have to know that TFT, they're eventually going to get BKBs. Especially on... The, if they get BKBs on their Tricor, Vega's lineup is going to be doing no damage in the team fights. Like Invoker oh. versus early BKBs just gets gets crushed. And they're going to get them at a very early time because of how successful all this is went. So Lina, Marana, and Wraith King. That'll probably be the next timing that we see TFT really press the issue. BKBs, maybe that second rush, and then look to end. They can still look for hunting plays because they're so strong, but as for ending the game, they just they need that. They don't need that, but they want that match community to be. Oh, here we go, though. Around the bounty rune. Could all kick off. Jumping from Frost as well as leading from Chelsea. They do get the global silence out. Supernova's there, but jumping from Hanskin. He wants to kill the egg. He needs help, though, and he's not getting it. The rest of the team have bailed. They said, screw you, Hanskin. We're going to leave you for dead. But they didn't want to help him out there with that commitment on the egg. But that is the egg and the global. Global silence used, and of course, just the support us are killed. So still good for TFT if they can do something during these ultimate downtimes. How long is our roast respawn? About a minute or so, I imagine. Minute and a half. Okay. Minute and a half. Okay. So any ults will be back up around then. Mm-hmm. Dendi's halfway toward Ag. Madara is also about halfway toward BKB. So those are some decent timings for them. They're still quite set back though. As it is yeah, 20,000 gold. I mean, isn't it just how rich Frost and Chessy? I mean, yeah. all three calls, Frost, Chessy. You know, some fan there in such a great place. Nearly They're level. all going to get BKBs yeah. pretty, at this, pretty much at the same time. Lena already has hers finished, but. Nearly level 18 as well on uh, Frost. Yeah. So they can look to fight even more frequently and, and really abuse these sort of downtimes on the ults that we're talking about. <coughs> This game is not going to get any easier for Vega nope. as it goes on. The Wraith King, Mirana Lina, in a good position to continue to scale very well. Yep, and like we said, those that triple BKB timing plus Aegis Cheese, is, that's that's what TFT is going to be waiting for to try to end this one. And yep. Vega, they can't farm at the same pace. They don't have the map control. Axe just heavily set back, can't actually make plays because... In order for him to make plays, he needs so many extra heroes with him, so they actually just have to kind of sit behind each other and hope to catch TFT when they make over-aggressive plays. He doesn't have something like an axe with a blade mail. This Exord is only level 2 as well, so the Sunstrike is pretty minimal. Uh, the Sunstrike, I mean, we've seen the Sunstrike really just nothing more than just a, a vision tool. The damage is not really going to do anything crazy as into the pit they go. Four seconds and TFT, they're, in, they're set, they're, they're ready. They're ready for Roche, and here it goes, perfect. Trosh jumps into the bit, and they'll make quick work of the Roche, and will be scouted out by the Sunstrike, but nothing at all the Vega Squadron can do about this. Nope, TFT has wards already positioned around as well, just in case. Oh, good jive in, but already picked up. As now, yeah, we, we have to imagine TFT get those those last two BKBs finished if they don't have them already. And look at fight and close this one out. Madara does have He's got his BKB, so he may not die straight away. Mm -hmm. They do still have, obviously, ways to punch through a BKB, but in terms of holding him down, it's going to be a little harder. That's cheese on Frost. Money for the BKB, pretty much that. It's not an easy game at all for Vega Squadron. 
No, you said it earlier, right? Pretty much impossible. Yeah. They have to hope what was for the everything. What's the Dota plus win percent, actually? Did we check that? It's got to be high. Yeah, 96. 96. Yep. 96%. TFT came in with a game plan. I mean, we, 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 we can't forget that TFT did have a game yesterday where they what were was like, the percent? Uh, we didn't actually see because we didn't check, did but it. it looked like it was, it had to be like 99, maybe even 100, and they did lose it. So we know that TFT can throw unthrowable games, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know if that's going to happen two days in a row. And if it does, then this team is, you know, th it's almost like there's a curse on them. There's no way you win two games like that in two days in a row. I lose two games like that. So. As the top lane pushes there, they're outside the base, ready to see if they can find a jump, Kazu, trying to push out the other lanes. He's got a blade mail at least, so he okay. could, could look to deal a lot of damage, but there isn't two in ages, cheese the crit, oh, oh he lives, he lives the crit though, he did live the crit, I didn't think he'd live the crit. As TFT, they're in the base, Mara's going for the split push on the uh, Morphling. Right. Oh, that egg is in a very rough spot, it is super dead. Chessie puts the BKB in order to not lose his mana. Arrow connects onto Dendi. There's four dead in Vega's base. Two will buy back mana. He's I mean, gonna he's, get a Rex. He is gonna get a Rex. He, is he or is he? He is. He is. Oh, he, or is he? Or is he? Oh, he's not. There's a light strike. Is oh, there? Is there? No, he is. He's gonna get it. He's gonna get it. And he's gonna TP. And he's out. All right. I mean, surely they can't lose. There's the nice. Surely. There's the, the first nice and the first party horn by Vega. They're feeling some life after that one. I mean, even though they're at a huge, huge I mean, deficit, can, it's still almost impossible. Is there a world in which Vega Squadron win this game? I. They're they're so far behind. It's 29 minutes. They're 25k behind. It's 21 to four. They're not going to get any. Oh, they're going to get some bounty runes. MNT gets oh. two. This this is it. Let's see the maybe. Let's, let's check the Dota plus percentage again. Maybe TFT are cursed. They lost. Oh, a, what is it now? No, 98%. It went to ninety eight percent now. <laughs> <laughs> so TFT is say they, the, the game last day yesterday was at least a ninety eight percent chance that they won and they lost it. Is that really going to happen again? I don't think so. This I mean, one, no. it, but this it one, could. I, the, the, yesterday it didn't. It, did, it really felt like this is why. It absolutely felt like I the game. I mean, it's true. But this it time around, it's. They've got a full tricore farming incredibly well. Though. Oh, that's the, yesterday, right? It was like a spec. They had a dual core. That was actually another kind of a tricore. Yeah, they. Uh, yesterday they had a spectre. And but this time they've got the triple BKBs versus an invoker. Yesterday they had a spectre and a tinker. Ninety-eight percent win rate. They were two racks up and they lost the game. They're not. Oh. Like they I mean, lost okay, the right. game yesterday. That's, this is true. This is true. I mean, if they lose this game. Oh, I'm honest, that, that is some that is some stuff. Oh, it's gonna be tough this time around though. Okay. Oh, Agony is leaner now. They st thing is that this time, yeah, they have, they have these triple BKBs on their cores versus an Invoker lineup. It's like the Axe and the Morphling can do a lot of work, but the other three heroes are completely nullified. Yeah, yeah. At this later stage. I mean, they really should be able to close. It's a 98% chance of closing, and it yeah. certainly feels like that. And now they identify too. They're like, we're not gonna push mid lane. It doesn't matter because we have tier 1s and tier 2s up. The bottom lane is the one that's already pushed into our side, so let's just push bottom, and we should be able to successfully close this one out. There we go. Taking another set of racks. Said, so, but maybe this is where the curse kicks in. Oh, there's a there is a curse. In fact, onto the mall thing. They get the jump onto the Phoenix. Phoenix Global. will get bashed down and die before he gets the chance. Supernova. Death on the Morphling. Mana revives back straight away. Kezu does get in with the call onto two, but now the call is over. He's got a blade mail, but that won't save him as TFT kill off Kezu. They get the bottom racks. Do they want to stick around for more? That is a question. They sure do. Moving over to mid. Aegis has about 15 seconds left on it, so they want to commit forward as much as possible. I mean, they've got... They're at the 1k per minute lead. That's Chessy. Oh, they find the arrow. Chessy does have buyback. Tornado comes in. Chessy dies. Oh, right before Aegis expires. And they do pop Frost as well. They get the call onto the Mirana, but Cole embraces there from Arrow, keeping him safe. Matter repulse the BKB. And it's got the waveform away. But TFT can hold their ground by this mid set of racks. Look to claim the Megas. Frost jumps in with a Ray Fire Blast, making sure the Kezu can't jump forward. The Laguna Blade's there. On to Madara. GG, well played, is called. They won't be cursed today, TFT, as they take game one. And. Absolutely solid game plan. It was very. It was from, from start to finish there, TFT. They had this one in the bag all along. Yep. I like, the, I like how they make this race.